Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, the President of Ghana, Togo, Senegal, Niger, and Chad. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President-elect, who is representing my leader, the President-elect. Your Excellencies, Senate President, and other leaders that are here, my brother governors, the man of the moment, my good Egbon, a Lagosian, a Nigerian of no mean feet, Alaji Aliko Dangote. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, today is May 22nd, 2023. Mr. President, exactly seven days from today, you will graciously, by the grace of Almighty Allah, be bowing down as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President, if we don't know, you have spent 2,915 days out of 2,000 922 days that you have. Mr. President, you have spent 99.98% of your time. Mr. President, history will certainly judge you well. We in Lagos are happy. This is your third trip to the free trade zone in less than a year. But today, it's not only about you. It's about three short stories that I'll just quickly talk on. The first story is about a young Nigerian, 45 years ago, and you see the coincidence in the story. 45 years ago, who came to Lagos all the way from another mega city in our country, Kano? Who saw the prosperity, the diversity of our country? Who came with nothing? but in 45 years has built the biggest empire in the world for Africa. A man that we have handed over the key of Lagos to as a real indigent, because with all of the resources and belief that he has in our state, we cannot but truly say that you are one of us and you are indeed a detribalized Nigerian, a Nigerian that we're truly proud of. Mr. President, the second story it's about another young Nigerian in 1978, because he came to Lagos in 1978. This young Nigerian, too, in 1978, as a military brigadier general, was saddled with the responsibility as the Commissioner for Petroleum Resources. He completed and handed over the Wari refinery. Today, he sits as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, handing over the biggest single-line refinery in the history that we know of mankind today. It's no sheer coincidence that these histories are coming together. The third story is also about a man that I said will be taken over from you by the grace of God in seven days' time, who also with sheer coincidence in 2006 as the 12th governor of Lagos envisioned that this whole area should be named and set aside as a free zone. And 17 years after, we have seen what the lucky free trade zone has turned into. I, not part of the three stories, but I was opportune to be part of his team at that time. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the vision of three different people in these three stories. The story of Aliko Dangote, the story of our president, Muhammad Buhari, and the story of our incoming president, Ashua Jubala Mechinubu, how they intertwine into the story of Nigeria, in the story of possibility, when men have a shared common vision, purpose, and they have the possibility that things can happen, things can change, and things can be prosperous for the people they are leading. Mr. President, we, in Lagos are proud of you. We are indeed excited that you have thrown everything you have into it. And as you bow down, I might not have the opportunity of a speaker again. I might not have the opportunity of holding a mic again. I want to say to you that on behalf of all of us in Lagos, we're truly, truly, truly proud of the things that you have done 
for us in this country. Thank you, Mr. President, as you bow down. To our son, Alaji Aliko Dangote, a lot of people have described you differently, but indeed, it's clear that your single-mindedness, your sole conviction that things can be different, you know, is unparalleled. And we have demonstrated and we have seen it because I have also come here a couple of times, and each time it's always a wow. We're indeed truly proud that you have put Nigeria and indeed Africa on that world map in which you have done the very first that nobody or well, history will want to come and meet it up. And we're proud of your belief in your country, your belief in the youth that you are given opportunity to, and we're proud of the fact that you are a Nigerian that is completely detribalized and you have been invited in of many ways than possible. I want to thank you and thank you again. I want to also thank in absentia our president-elect, who, like I said, also propelled the vision of ensuring that what we are enjoying today as governor and as Lagosians, he was also the main architect of that modern history of trajectory of Lagos. And we're hopeful and praying that when you do come in as a president, all of those additional visions that he has will come to reality. And so these three men, Aliko Dangote, President Muhammad Buhari, and President-elect Bola Ahmed Chinubu, epitomizes all of the great qualities of great leadership. They have shown us that it is possible from nothing to be something. They have shown us that the spirit of Nigerians not to give up is possible if we are forthright and will keep on doing it. And they have shown us that leadership is about consistency, is about showing you know, that whatever it is you believe in, give it all it takes. And at the end of it, you will see the results coming out. I want to end this mind short um, goodwill by using this opportunity to thank our host community. I'll like to mention and thank them, but I think it's important that I thank them very, very much. This community has been, you know, the host to several, several firsts in our country, and I want to thank all of them, from all of their traditional rulers to all of the indigenous citizens that have continued to reflect the true spirit of Lagos, to be able to show hospitality and accommodation in everything that we're about. I want to thank, thank you very much. I want to thank all of the guests and all of the investments that have come to Lagos. We don't say, Your Excellencies, we don't say that you are welcome to Lagos. We say this is Lagos. It's a commercial, economic nerve center of our country. It's a place where all of us as Nigerians are truly, truly proud of because it continues to help us stay and take off, you know, as a nation. If we were to be a country, numbers show that Lagos could be the sixth biggest economy in the whole of Africa. And so you are all welcome to this is Lagos. On a final note, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's about the opportunity this has provided for all the youth and young people of our country. It's about the fact that we can say to them that what these three men uh, Mr. President, Alaji Dangote, and our incoming president have done and will continue to do is about their future. It's about providing opportunity for them because the over 150,000 or so direct and indirect jobs that will be created are not for 65 year old and not for 55 year old. They are jobs for our youth, our young leaders that are in their 20s and in their 30s. And for them to believe that indeed Nigeria is a place for them. Nigeria considers them as an important and a veritable tool in developing and ensuring that the very best is always at us. I want to thank you all very much for coming, and I want to pray that as Aliko Dangote has done this, the conversation is how many Dangotes are we going to build? From Port Harcourt to Enugum, from Sokoto to Maiduguri, from Lagos to Abuja, we need to replicate the likes of Aliko Dangote.
Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.